Abdallah will be back tomorrow to do the lunch rush. He's off today. We have Kevin Zipak in to do the lunch rush. Oh, how about Let's that? Do it. What's going on, fellas? What how are we buddy? doing? We're great. Up, I think we should have gotten sandwiches today. That's just me. Shout out Viking Scott for Come the in donuts. Tomorrow. Yeah, well, at least you got a donut. All right, let's start here with uh, some bears. Uh, I saw a article in Bleacher Report written by this fella, Matt Holder, floating the idea of the Bears enlisting Ryan Tannehill services for the 2024 season. Of course, uh, we saw a little Tyson, Tyson Bajant last year. He wasn't bad. I think he acquitted himself pretty well. Yeah. He made some big fans uh, that, that called into the shows. Oh, yeah. Um, sure did. How would you guys feel about uh, Tannehill acting as a veteran mentor to one Caleb Williams? Fine. Got no problem with it. Now he's not. It's not a threat to Caleb. It's he's literally a backup in case something, God forbid, goes wrong. I'd be fine. Yeah, break glass in case of emergency. I, I, That's I what he would be there. For. I also don't mind if Bajent would have to be the answer for two or three games, like he was last year. Interesting. I mean, I'd be okay with that. I think. You're, okay. I guess Tannehill would be better, but a little bit better. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's I think he'd be a little bit better. I, I agree mean, at with least you. he's been out there and he's seen him fly. Much more than Bajan has been. You're right. You're right. I'd be fine with that. I had no no problems if the Bears add Ryan Tannehill to this roster. Does going out and signing a vet like Tannehill signal how serious they are to compete? Because like um, Bajan would be like, yeah, he could go out there for a few games, stopgap guy. But if I you guess... go out and get Tannehill, isn't it like if something happens, God forbid, to the number one pick? At least this team still could be on track to make the playoffs. I guess you're right about that. Like, he could keep them afloat longer than Bajan would be able to. So, I th- I see what you're saying, Chris. Maybe. And they they should be thinking that way. Like, they sh- and I think they are. If Everything we've gathered. Starter, we need a solid quarterback yeah. to be able to step in yeah. for at least a three, four game stretch and, like happened last and year. And maybe even longer. And, like, Tannehill would be the better option. So, yeah, they should be thinking that way. Yes. All right, a little baseball here uh, in transition to a uh, more broad question. The Orioles are calling up the number one prospect in baseball, Jackson Holiday. Chris was very proud that he knew who uh, his dad was. Oh, uh, see, yeah, but he's... Uh, he was tearing... <laughs> I, well, I, was, I was happy that I knew. Of course you know who he is. Wait, You're... why would you say of course? Because his dad was one of the... The fantastic player. 20 best baseball but players of the last 20 years. I don't sit around reading Prospect oh, magazine. But you're a sport, but you're still a sports fan, and you've that been was, in the sports radio industry for you're, 15 years. What are prospects that, before they do something? Suspects. Yeah. There no, you go. No, I thought, I, thought you were, oh, I thought you were saying he was proud that he knew that his dad was Matt Holiday. Yes, is that what, that's what he was. Yeah, of course yeah. you know who Matt Holiday is. <laughs> I thought his dad it. was Vonnie Holiday. Why is oh, it? Of course. It. <sighs> anyway, he uh, number one prospect in Smart baseball. Ass. He was uh, tearing it up down in Norfolk. Uh, Norfolk, excuse me. Norfolk? Norfolk. Norfolk. And right. Back in Norfolk. What about Norfolk? Uh, he's a very, very hyped player, obviously. Uh, Steven Strasburg, of course, officially retired. He Saw was that. extremely hyped yeah. uh, when yes. he was coming along. Bryce Harper, yes, you know. You, the, who are some of the most hyped prospects you can remember in your lifetime? Harper. For sure. Of probably the most recent vintage, I'm not sure a baseball player has been quite as hyped. Like, Jackson Holiday is probably the most hyped prospect since Harper in about 2018, 2019. Don't you think, you're Rushman's right up there with him, too. I mean, when Adley he put, Rushman, yeah. yeah, but not like that. Not well, like Brian this. was hyped. Yeah, Chris Bryant was. He was he also was a little older. He was a yeah. college player who was very accomplished. And he was a little bit older. Strasburg? I kinda, I'm th- Strasburg's a good one. That's what Kevin was saying. Those guys also were very dominant college players. I'm thinking more along the lines like Harper was a phenom from the word go from uh, as a teenager. And he was on SI yes. in high school, was he not? Yes. He got the LeBron Ho- treatment. Holiday is a teenager. Uh, Ken Griffey Jr. was a teenager. Like those guys are, uh, A-Rod was basically a teenager, yeah. right? You're maybe yeah, 20. Yeah, came out of high school. I mean, he came out of high school yeah. from Miami, went up to Appleton. I mean, I'm saying he was in the bigs yeah. by about 20. I mean, yeah. like, those oh, guys. Even, even younger than that. Was he he had younger? his contract in September. He had to be called up. Oh, did he? Yes. You know, so those guys, yeah, Yurko's right. He was, oh, my God, he played 17 games as an 18-year-old. Yeah. Worked in the strike year. By 1995, uh, he's in the big leagues, and uh, he's, he's 19 years old. So you're right. Like, those guys. Like, Holiday is in company with those guys right now. And then his brother is draft eligible next year. Did you know I was reminded by friend of the show, Reed Rooney, because of the new anti-tanking rules in baseball, do you know the White Sox will not be eligible for a top 10 pick next year? Did you know that? I did not know that. 
They might finish with the worst record in baseball and they can't get a top 10 pick. Why? Because of the new anti-tanking rules. Well, I, I mean, they're not. They're just bad. So who gets the they first pick then? They don't allow the non-revenue sharing teams to go top 10 in back-to-back -back years. The White Sox have a top 10 pick this year. So they can have the worst record. And they'll pick 11? And pick 11. And or maybe it's 11? not. They might not be able to be in the top nine. They could be. The highest they could be, I think, is 10th. They, they, won't, they won't have a chance at Ethan Holiday. They're, they're, they could be the worst team in baseball this year without a chance next spring, next summer, of the best prospect in America. It's hard being a Sox fan, man. Yeah. It's damn hard. And that's probably one of Jerry's rules. No, no, because it's it, it wouldn't benefit them, really. You know, it's, it's, it's a baseball, because they're a big market. They don't, you know... They're, they're trying to prevent any of the big markets and the, the, the revenue sharing teams from having that top 10 pick in back to back years. You know, the teams that have to pay. That's why they put it in. Yeah, but those sacks don't pay. That's why whoever created that rule, the big teams, created it so the Pittsburghs of the world, back when they're lousy, the Kansas Cities, can't keep collecting top picks. Well, no, the sacks can't receive money. That's what they're trying to avoid. They're, they, they, they want the teams that are receiving to be eligible. The, the teams that are receiving are eligible. The teams that do not receive are not eligible for the, you know what I'm saying? For the back-to-back -back years in the top 10. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. There's just goofy. Some language in there that it's I've goofy. got to understand. Yeah. What else, Kev? All right, it's that time of year in Chicago, uh, the Chicago land area, the Donald E. Stevens Convention Center this weekend, this coming weekend, I should say. Oh, yeah, say. I know it's coming. The Triple Exotica Ooh, Convention. Yeah. Good times, nice. Cars. Any interest? You guys going to be uh, there? Unfortunately, I've got a full slate this week. Uh, yeah, I'll not be this able to participate. No, no, no. I'm playing golf on Saturday and Sunday. I got a little uh, something, a, a rally happening in Northwest Indiana that I'll be at Saturday afternoon. Um, a rally? A rally, yeah, a Excuse rally. Me? What? A rally. I got a buddy of mine who's running for town councilman. Okay. okay. Really? St. John. Right. Yeah. You're going to a rally you this week? Right. So a little rally, you know, a little fundraiser. I you love got to raise the funds. You should probably say what it is next time, not just saying we got a rally <laughs> this weekend. Well, again, that lets the mind, the individual mind, run rampant, which I don't mind. Here it comes. And if you're offended because of that, too bad. <laughs> That's the lunch rush. <laughs> Classic Yurko.